So now in this video, we're going to be looking at capacitors in parallel and in series. So these are both 10 microfarad capacitors. That's going to make things easy. They are rated for 50 volts. And uh, they're actually pretty easy to read, but not showing up on camera terribly well. So that's a little unfortunate. But in uh, any case, we will zoom back and we will stick them in the board. So as I said before, these are 10 microfarad capacitors, the two of them. Unfortunately, capacitors, their rated values are usually not terribly accurate. You can expect maybe 10% uh, lower or 20% higher, and uh, you never know for sure. So, uh, of course, there are some that uh, they sell that are more accurate than others. And this is an auto ranging meter. It kind of takes a little bit of time to get to the proper setting but there you can see we're slightly above about 11 microfarad and these capacitors are polarized so you want to put the black probe to the uh, negative side of the capacitor the red probe to the positive side of the capacitor that's how you charge them when you charge them you make this side more negative and that side more positive you can discharge them down to a zero volts it's uh, better to keep a charge on them over time but you can discharge them down to a zero volts but there you can see that one is also 11 and uh, about a half microfarad right there but they're rated for 10 microfarad so parallel is really easy you just connect them in parallel and now we just since they're equal value capacitors we just double the capacitance it's going to be about 20 324 microfarad we'll see that that's pretty straightforward so you put them in parallel their capacitances add up and you can do parallel with unequal value capacitors perfectly fine that's no problem until you get the capacitance you want that adds up they all have to be able to handle whatever voltage you're going to put across them and uh, so as I said before these are rated for 50 volts my bench power supply only goes to 18 and uh, I don't even use 18 volts very often so these two capacitors would be plenty fine so now we're gonna do something interesting we're gonna put them in series so now you can see they're connected end to end in series and the capacitance is actually gonna go down and you do want equal value capacitors when they are in series and uh, we'll take a look why coming up so there are exceptions, but for the most part, till you learn those exceptions, just use equal values in series. So there you can see the capacitance actually went down. It went down in half, right there. So instead of about 11 and a half, now we have about five and a half, plus a little bit more, five and three fourths. And uh, so yeah, we can still measure them independently. And again, it's an auto ranging meter, so it takes a little time. If you have a meter, that you set a range limit and it gives you the numbers up to that limit or below it will display faster but there you can see their values and when they are in series now you can see it is half the capacitance because they're equal value so if we had three in series we would have one third of the capacitance of one of them so that's another way you can get generally a fraction of a uh, capacitance of capacitors you have so that really is not common except we're going to look at uh, why you may use that so we're gonna connect this to the power supply right here we don't need to zoom back uh, that far there we go we're gonna connect the two side of them they're still in series right now and now I'm gonna turn the bench power supply on as you can see it uh, is uh, powering this rail but I have jumpers going across right there that is closer to the meter so this is where we are going to focus so I set the meter to measure voltage and this instantly charged the capacitors let's go up to uh, 18 volts it was 5 volts and capacitors can charge instantly pretty pretty easily so as I said before we have 18 volts at the rail so now if you see capacitors in series this is probably why let's say 
Each one of these capacitors can only handle 10 volts. I have super capacitors that can only handle 5 volts. So it is possible you will have capacitors that don't handle the voltage you want to deal with. So in this case we have 18. As I said before, each one of these can handle 50. No problem. We are nowhere near there. But let's imagine each one of them can only handle 10. So now let's measure the voltage across one of the capacitors. You can see that it is 6 volts. And it's going to change because there is resistance, uh, not infinite resistance through the meter. There's high resistance, but these are uh, somewhat low value uh, capacitors. So in any case, we will measure this one. So a little current's flowing through the uh, capacitor, or through the meter, and changing the voltage. Plus, you notice here, we don't have half of the voltage right there. It is it is higher for some reason. I'm uh, I'm surprised by that, that it's that off. So let's discharge them first. And so the meter must have put some charge on them beforehand. All right. We may have another problem, too. One of these may kind of be bad. Maybe it has some more leakage than it should. Let's go back there. Now, again, 18 volts at the rail. We discharge them and then plugged them back in. And there you can see about 8 volts there. And 10.29 uh, uh, there. So they should actually be about even. And uh, so something's wrong. Maybe this one's leaking more current. And what that would mean is that as current slips through it, that allows this one to charge a little bit more. They're both going to share the power supply voltage. So that may be the problem I don't know let's uh, check the uh, voltage again 6.7 and uh, yeah that one's about 12 so again you can see that it split the voltage it should be about equal though so this meter I don't know if it can measure up to a hundred or a thousand uh, microfarads but uh, let's grab a couple they should uh, work out better all right, so I grabbed a couple 470 microfarad capacitors. Make sure they are uh, discharged here. And so another reason why you might have an unequal voltage across them is that one has a higher capacitance than the other. So when you that's when they are in series. So let's check the capacitance of these. And uh, so. The one with the higher capacitance will have less voltage on it. The one with lower capacitance will gain a higher uh, voltage when you store charge across them. So this can easily measure 470 microfarad. That's what I grabbed. You can see 470 microfarad. Let's try them in series. So I think the leads are spaced differently. I'll get this out of the way. It'll be easier to add with uh, than to uh, move. So again, they're polarized. We'll put that towards the more negative. You can see the uh, wire there. And uh, do the same thing with this one. Right there. And now, let's add this jumper. And so we should have... Oh, I just charged it. So, we don't want to measure capacitance right now. They are uh, charged. So, again, we have 18 volts at the rail. And so now we should have about 9 volts across each of the capacitors. And there you can see that. We have 9 volts there. So I'm not sure what exactly went wrong with the, uh, the other capacitors. But there you can see. We split up the voltage. They're equal value. And uh, so they both split the voltage pretty much equally. And so if you have a higher voltage than what your capacitor can handle, that is usually when you put it in series. So you may put it in series because you want let's uh, let's turn the power supply off you may put them in series because you want we may see a spark here okay no we didn't see a spark but that should have discharged them let's make sure it is uh, discharged really quick zero volts and uh, so I'll yank that jumper and we will measure the capacitance and again Maybe we do want, what would it be, uh, 250, I think, because these are slightly more than 470 each. So there we go, about 236. Maybe that's what you want, and you don't have 
a like 220 microfarad or something and uh, so this is the last resort right there but uh, usually series capacitors are for uh, voltage so any case hopefully that all made sense when you have them in series you got to be careful that like a resistance doesn't come across them or a low resistance I mean because as I said before when we saw the other capacitors uh, maybe one of them kind of lets some charge get through it and maybe it's got a problem maybe it's kind of faulty so these are getting old now and uh, they're the electrolyte within them kind of goes bad over time so I haven't observed that yet but I've read that that happens so maybe there's an issue there but uh, in any case we saw with these we got an equal uh, share of the voltage since there's two of them they both got half and so you got to be careful that you don't get an imbalance with them if you're dealing with voltages higher than their rating plus these are polarized so if one of them gets charged more than the other and then you discharge them to nothing that one that got charged more than the other may reverse charge so we charged them this way if this one got more of a charge while well, they're discharging it would go this way and this side could potentially get more positive than that side while well, it is discharging if uh, this one was higher to begin with and you got the same problems with uh, batteries so in any case hopefully that all made sense and uh, read this up uh, read, find the reading material for this I should say if it doesn't really make sense because it's explained but not really demonstrated in person like this and you want to make sure that the meter gets turned off so thanks for watching I will see you in the next video